Hi, this is David Lee Goodman. I'm a real estate agent and property manager in Nashville, Tennessee. And today I just wanted to talk about how I got my start in Nashville. Like a lot of people in Nashville, my wife and I uh, showed up here kind of on a whim. This was back in 2011. We just graduated from a small school in North Carolina, and we didn't really know what to do. I wasn't able to find a job at the time. I was kind of a mess at that point. Um, All I knew was I didn't know what to do, and so I decided to get into uh, music, which is what a lot of people do here in Nashville. I went to Belmont University and got another degree. I got got a degree in audio engineering. I do some weird music, uh, bagpiping actually. Thought I could take those skills to Nashville. Um, And I do do that now, but not in the way that I was thinking I was going to do. Uh, So I got into the audio side of it, realized that it that really wasn't for me and I still got the degree and after I graduated we were here uh, my wife had a similar uh, situation and she ended up getting a nursing degree at, at Belmont which was a lot more useful actually than an audio engineering degree I just ended up with a lot of debt and she ended up with a job that was super useful and made money and actually got us going in real estate, which kind of brings me to, you know, how did I get my start in real estate? After a couple of years here in Nashville, um, my, my girlfriend at the time, wife now, decided that she liked me and wanted we were going to get married. We were pretty happy with where we were in Nashville. We, by that point, we were comfortable. The buzz about Nashville was being talked about. Um, We knew that we were fairly happy uh, being here, but this was like around 2013, 2014. Um, The big, big boom hadn't really gotten here yet. When we first decided to buy our house, though, I do remember we were in Southeast Nashville. We bought a 1960s ranch with a basement that we were going to rent out. And uh, we paid $164,000 for that house in that neighborhood, which at the time and maybe even now isn't like wasn't really seen as the most like the best neighborhood. I now love that area. I feel like it's a little pocket of Nashville that uh, is a hidden hidden gem. But at the time, uh, it was maybe a little bit rougher, maybe more renters in the area. But I, you know, they're 60s ranches and they were awesome. I remember my neighbor in, behind us, they just couldn't believe what we paid for that house um, because at the time, that was the most expensive house in the neighborhood. And uh, that's something I've seen a- along the way um, my entire career in Nashville is is that we are an appreciating market. Even in 2014, at that point, at that time frame, we were an appreciating market. People were moving here. That has only grown and exponentially. Um, so when people move here, properties appreciate in value. So after living there for just about, I think it was a year, um, I had the bright idea that I would start a halfway house. My wife and I moved into the basement and started renting to uh, four drug addicts, <laughs> and, and uh, we started our business that way, and it ended up working out really, really well, but I still can't believe that she let me do that, and uh, it's it's worked out great. Um, it got me started working in treatment and doing um, recovery home uh work, uh, which was kind of my intro into house hacking, because in Nashville, you have to be creative to make to make the finances and rents make sense. Because rents here, up until recently, have not really been all that expensive compared to how fast house prices have gone up. So luckily, just living there after a year and then doing some creative renting, uh, it did slowly make sense. After starting the the recovery home the, in the first house that we bought, um, my wife and I developed a strategy of like moving out of that house just to make sure that it would rent out. And when we found out that that was a plausible business, we were then able to purchase our next house. 
and we did the same exact thing. So in in that house, we had a uh, it was a split level in the same neighborhood. We paid at that point. It's about a year later. The first house was one sixty four. A year later, the, or a year and a half later, the next house, less square footage, same neighborhood, was around two forty. So we saw a dramatic increase in appreciation in that time frame. We could still afford to live there, but it was more expensive. And I, at the time, I didn't really understand what that meant and how I how we could benefit from that appreciation. I just knew that we wanted to have rental income. So we bought the next house. It was another 1960s. It was a split level. We were able to rent out a spot. And we lived there for about two years or a year and a half to two years. After living there, we moved out of that and expanded the recovery home. And from there, uh, we, we rented for a year just to make sure we could support two houses. And f- that at that point, I was introduced to real estate investing. Um, I already knew I was interested in real estate investing, but I, I was introduced to amazing information from places like Bigger Pockets and started really honing in on the the ways to uh, build a portfolio in the most effective manner because I was realizing that this is a kind of a movement and it is, uh, you know, it's repeatable. I was doing everything kind of by chance building my real estate um, portfolio and there's a bunch of other people who do the exact same thing. There's podcasts. They talk about how to do it and um, ways to succeed at it. And so that's – I started diving into that. My brother turned me on to it. And from there, I knew that I, I, I knew that I wanted to do more in real estate. At that point, I got my real estate license. And this is now the beginning of COVID or right before COVID, before I really started developing um, my real estate sales part of it. I was already doing uh, management, obviously, with the recovery homes. Um, But now I wanted to kind of get my license and dive more into that. And uh, at the, I think it was 2019, we pulled equity out of the first house to pay for our current primary residence. And so that's where I started seeing the power of owning property to buy more property and just even though I wasn't making a lot of money myself through my nonprofit that I was running like I was making almost nothing really it was the fact that my wife had a good nursing job which is just like a hard working job it makes pretty good money but because she was doing that we were able to kind of stack our our properties and start building a portfolio and, and from there um I realized that I I loved real estate investing, and I knew I wanted to help other people do the exact same thing. So anyone who's renting, they should definitely buy a house, like help my friends, help my network, just get into homes that they can live in. But beyond that, like build a a, a network of uh, of like minded people that are really trying to do more with their real estate other than just living in it, which is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can do so much more with it other than just living in it, which is fantastic. You can really build off of that into growing what you want your life to be um, if you do it the right way and, and, and do it with other people that are also doing the same thing. So that's really what I've come to love to do in my real estate career. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the niche that I've, I've found myself in. When we first moved here, I think it was a complete chance for us. It was a place where she could get a nursing degree and I could do something in music, in audio. And we knew, uh, I knew a friend that lived here. So I thought this is a, this is a, as good as any, uh, of a place to come and just, you know, in that time frame of just going to school, we were seeing, we were hearing some buzz about Nashville. I had, you know, I even remember people talking about, or what stuck out to me about 2008, 2007, 2008 recession is that we were not as affected by that. Now, I don't know if that's true or not uh, as other markets. I I could look into that further, but I, I could, I could kind of remember 
that this was a stable place and it was a place that people were coming to. And as we found our roots here, uh, places like East Nashville, The Nations, Woodbine, all these hip places were kind of becoming more and more developed and evolving into what they are now. And uh, we, I found my start in real estate. We bought our first house. We were house hacking. I started a business. And before we knew it, um, Nashville had just kind of blew up into this thing that where everyone wanted to be. We were seeing people coming from the Midwest. We're still seeing that. But And now we're seeing people coming from all over the country and all over the world show up here, from California to New York to Chicago, these markets that are um, already overgrown maybe. Um, they're wanting to go to um, – you know, a friendly, I get, you know, Nashville is really interesting because we're a, we're in the South, but we're like not that far into the South. Um, we're still considered a, a, a blue city, not, not to get into politics, but we're a very, very, I guess, red state. And so that mix has been really, really good. And, and from what I know about Nashvillians and like people in Tennessee, we're, we're, it seems like we're not that crazy on one side or the other. We're a fairly well-rounded bunch of people. We're, when I talk to tourists or new clients, it just seems like that's what everyone says about Nashville is that we're like people are nice. They're smiling. They want to help. There's some great coffee shops, great venues, great real estate, beautiful. Um, all of those things can be said about Nashville and you know, if for anyone who's just kind of looked at the skyline in the last few years, um, to look at a, a photo of, you know, 2014 to 2022, it's almost a completely different skyline. That's how fast our growth has been. So just the way Nashville looks is a lot different. I think people would also say maybe traffic has changed. I, I come from Houston, Texas. So like our traffic is like, you know, it's all perspective, I guess. We do have – we're a very small city, even even though we think we're getting kind of big. Like, we're still a, a small city in my view. It only takes, you know, a 15-minute drive outside of Nashville, and you're kind of like in the middle of – you're in the country. And you, you can do some beautiful hiking. There's lots of greenways here. Like, there's still a whole lot of – natural space here, even though we are developing at such a fast pace. So what do I do now? I now, I, I the biggest thing I want to be is a real estate resource for my clients. And the, the best way I do that, the most effective way is through property sales, uh, selling property, buying property, doing both at the same time, consulting, working with, with buyers and sellers on what is the next move for their piece of real estate? Um, and if you don't own real estate, how do? What's the best way to go about buying it? Um, because, I mean, once you've kind of figured out the secret of of purchasing real estate and how it can af how it can uh, dramatically uh, progress your current situation. Then it's about finding people that you trust to help you do it. And so that's what I really enjoy doing right now is property sales. Uh, and beyond that, I, obviously, I was working with – I'm doing property management. work. I was, I was working with the worst tenants uh, you could imagine. So I figured that would be a really, really good way for me to get into the property management space um, – and that's, you know, not a lot of people like doing that. But for me, I like wanting to be a resource for my clients, uh, some of which are out of state, but some of which are just like in state, but they don't want to be landlords, like being that person that they can call on to, to um, manage their, their assets. That's been um, a niche um, 
that I've found myself in. I won't say I absolutely love managing a bunch of properties and tenants and all that stuff, but it doesn't bother me as much as it sometimes bothers other people. I can I tend to let things uh, roll by, and I just want to make sure that you know a t- the tenants you know well respected. They're getting what they need. The the owners getting what they need. Uh, and hopefully they're not both mad at me at the same time. So that's kind of what I found myself doing. The biggest thing I wanted to be, though, as a, as a real estate agent or a consultant is a resource for my clients, like whether they need property management, whether they're looking for a handyman or a flooring guy or like the best restaurants to go to in Nashville. I just want to be that person for people that are looking at the Nashville market. And so I guess one of my biggest strengths is just being as connected to people as I can possibly be, whether it be a handyman or someone who wants to buy their first home or someone who's been here for a really, really long time. Like you want to be able to call on your realtor and ask, hey, who do you use for your real estate taxes? Who do you use for flooring? Do you have a plumber? Uh, hey, I want to take my mom out and go do something fun in Nashville. What would you do? So that's that's kind of what I want to be to my clients um, in something that I, I do currently. So, I, so I, I hope learning about my story has helped to help you to kind of get to know how I got my start. If, if any of that connects with you and you're looking for someone to help you buy, manage, or sell real estate, I'd love to help. You can contact me at the website, which is www.dlgoodmanproperties.com or shoot me an email at david at dlgoodmanproperties.com Thanks for watching.